Hey everyone. Hello. Hello. How's everyone doing? Doing all right. How about yourself? I I am well for a change. I think <laughs> I finally wrapped up uh, two big riding commitments this week, which have freed myself up. And I can also talk about those things. Uh, we we handed in the manuscript for a sequel to the Phoenix Project, centered on security and governance, called Investments and Limited. It's like a spinoff of Parts and Limited, but an investment firm. And the other one is uh, with the DoD. They're they're working on a very much like the DevSecOps guide, but like an ecosystem reference guide for Kubernetes. And that's pretty soon to get a signature for an authorizing officer. So quite relieved. I started digging on this document a whole lot more since, particularly last night. Cool. Yeah. Uh, should we get started? I think uh, a few of the other folks who were, some of the Google folks I think are, are busy with that salsa thing <laughs> that they uh, hinted at. So um, I think we might have, a, might supposed to be us. Let's go for it. Cool. Right. Um, so uh, I guess, uh, Andres, do you want to lead it? Uh, do you want to take it away, man? Yeah. OK, cool. You're the man. Um, sure. Uh, so um, obviously, still working on the uh, doc here. Um, wanted to kind of go around, um, see if folks had updates, uh, concerns, et cetera, um, from the stuff that they, they're doing. I guess we can go around. Um, I'll just uh, tag somebody, um, the first person who shows up on my list. Uh, or actually, I'll give my uh, update, and then um, we can go around. So. Uh, for for uh, me, um, haven't had a whole lot of time um, to actually look at the doc too much over the past week, trying to get uh, some of the stuff for KubeCon, um, some of my other stuff for KubeCon done. Uh, one of the things that um, looking at the doc that I think we need to sort of um, split up, uh, or the, the big thing that I, I want to take a closer look at um, in, in the next day or two is the build stuff again. Um, I have some concerns based on some stuff I've seen just sort of playing around with, with some of the, the tools in the ecosystem around enforcing um, uh, build images, um, that the build images themselves should be signed. Um, so I'm going to write up some stuff about that. Uh, and yeah, that's really about it for me. Uh, Matt, uh, or, Matt, I think you might, uh, you're... Um, might not be on mute. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, and so that's uh, my update. I'm going to keep taking a look at um, some of those uh, things specifically around um, the build. person who shows up next on my list is uh, Shripad. Do you have an update? Yeah, sure. 
So I, I think a couple of days back, I took a complete pass and just to see the structure, I think it's looking good. Uh, I added some section on the pipeline definition and the metadata document. Uh, there was some confusion around, there was some section written around metadata chain. Uh, I, I didn't knew what exactly that was and uh, do we need to add it uh, in there or we just cover it in the metadata document. Uh, apart from that, uh, yeah, there are a few sections that I'm trying to basically make some updates uh, specifically in around the dependencies and the input uh, to the build uh, stage, uh, that when we get the dependencies, we tag them, <clears throat> we make sure they are updated and everything. So I'll make those changes today. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much uh, what I had, but overall, I think it is looking good, the structure. Uh, Alex. Hi. Um... So I similarly, I was doing some work on the inputs and outputs sections, uh, and I'm looking now at some of the comments that are in there, and I will circle back to some of those um, later. And then I just sort of added um, additional comments throughout um, the document when I did a read through. I think the main thing that I saw, um, echoing a little bit of what Michael was saying, um, though perhaps in a slightly different direction, is there were a couple of steps in the um, the, let's see, I'm looking at the, at the build pipeline steps itself or the stages of the secure so software factory that, um, it seemed to me there were a couple of those that were either encompassing too much and maybe need to be broken up or, um, were maybe redundant of things that we've talked about in other parts of the paper. So that was sort of the main thing that I've flagged and I'm gonna circle back to again to see if I can rework a little bit of that. Um, next person that I see is uh, Brandon. All right, yeah, this past week, I did not get a chance to go through the document, but uh, today my plan is to actually do a full pass top to bottom through everything and just their comments wherever they may be appropriate. And then otherwise, I think the artifact repository stuff I saw that got pulled in. And if there are any changes over there that are needed, I can add those as we need to. Next up on my list is- Brandon, so your piece got incorporated, right? You were working on it on a separate document. That's what you see you've, you've yeah, that, seen has been merged. That was what I'd already copied over. And I think you approved that last night, so. Yeah, yeah okay. That, just That's confirming it. there wasn't anything else. Sweet. No, nope, nothing else. I, I'm short and simple on my stuff. So Succinct. Shock. shock, I think you're next on the list. As I have not participated at all, I have continued with my uh, extensive program of non-participation. And so far, I have done nothing and plan to do nothing. I'm not sure who's next on my list. Uh, Four four seven five four two three one triple nine. Hey Jax, we we minimally crossed paths when you were here at uh, VMware, but I did hear that you were quite a big proponent of, of concourse. So one of the things Ooh, shit, yeah. uh, we haven't quite gotten at with the doc, uh, we have strived to provide reference tooling where we believe a solution is the most mature or the most feature complete. But we also want to suggest like, hey, uh, here are some suitable alternatives that, that come close. Uh, sounds like you have a lot of experience and like good discernment and judgment to, to like be able to look at that. If, if you're looking for something to do, well, obviously you do whatever you wanna do, but uh, have a look through the doc and see what stands out as, as missing. Uh, we could we could benefit from review at this point and, and yeah as I said if if you see room for well this this is leaning towards like a particular framework or lean towards some way to think about the problem that it's not quite generalized or, or abstract enough we want to provide people choice for as much as we can that would be super beneficial I don't know when I'll get to it but I will make a pass through um, at some point trademark. Right now. What are you hoping to, to get out from non-participation? 
Well, I mean, at the moment, mostly I've been doing some strategic lurking. Um, there's, there's a lot of um, sort of uh, standing around the, the grove of the academy, holding our chins and saying, this security thing, uh, what are we doing um, at Shopify? Just not to imply that there isn't a lot of thinking and action on uh, security, but there's always more to do. Yeah, for sure. You know, tying that back into the concourse, I think Tecton is a great tool that inspired to one point to be a whole lot more like concourse. And they made some choices that Things I might have didn't quite get them there. Yeah, yeah. So, if, so we could write up like, hey, if, if you're building towards this, like here's some other things you may you may want to consider do down the line that are going to be more like idiomatic or more like extensible or yeah my my brain hasn't turned on for for the day but I think it's you, it's you know I'm it's almost Friday um yeah I, I hear that um I don't know how much time I have to devote to concourse as much as those on the call who know me know that I have just like a big heart shaped face for it um at shopify the the tool of choice is build kite um which i don't know as well but the it's a very heavy heavily in use very large uh build system so we'll see oh thank you and you're gonna tag who next i tagged the phone number because i don't know who that is and it was directly beneath me I think that's Axel. Hi, everybody. This is Axel from Red Hat. Um, yeah, so hopefully I'm trying to find the phone number. Team don't want to share them. Um, right, I was working uh, with Kriya on the... Um, on the post hey, man, sorry to video. cut you off. You sound yeah. absolutely under the water. Can, can't even make out what you're saying. All right, I'll... Okay, well, we'll read out loud what you type. You've been working on the pre-built, build, and post-built section. In need of group review. Okay. Yeah, maybe we can jump into that once we're done with the, with the round of, of updates. And I'll nominate for you, let's see, Marina. Hi, Marina. Hi, yeah. So I haven't had a lot of time this week to look at the document. I think I've been meaning to take another complete pass. I think like a couple other folks, um, just to see how it all fits together. Is there anything else missing or that I can add? So, yeah. Um, and I can pass it off to see who hasn't gone. I think I did here. I don't think you've gone. Sure. Uh, I took a look at a couple of things. I was taking a look at the metadata documents section. And I also see that the policy management stuff was merged by Andres. I, I was also looking at uh, the little addition that the, the, I think there was about a paragraph addition by Aradna that, that also made a lot of sense to me. I also want to take a full pass of the document before this weekend or early next week, essentially before we chat next week. So I think that's mostly it for me. And I'll tag uh, look on here. Matt and Moore? That, that might be it, with the exception of Matt Moore and David Wheeler who are joining for the first time. And me. Oh, okay. And Aradna, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's Hey, I can introduce myself. Uh, so I'm uh, dialing in for my first time. Wasn't really sure exactly what to expect. Um, I'm Matt Moore. I've been in the container tool space for uh, what feels like a very, very long time. Um, and I'm uh, looking to get involved. So um, it's nice to meet everyone. Welcome. Glad uh, you're here. 
Yeah, I will hand it over to the next new person since I know nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can jump in for myself, uh, David Wheeler. I actually work for the Linux Foundation. My title is Director of Open Source Supply Chain Security, but I have too many things I'm supposed to all be involved in. And so this is one of those, I, I want to get involved, but I have had limited time. So I'm trying to just uh, do it anyway. So, <laughs> so. Uh, want to get involved and at least try to keep up what's going on. Oh, yeah, I, I, yeah. For a number of you have already, we've we've already talked many times, but I think technically I'm new in this particular. Oh, meeting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Rodden, can... and you're not new, and you're you're helping us author the the document. Yeah, thank uh, you. I, I, yeah. Was that for David? Yeah, David, thank you. Looking forward to that. Um, so I did add some comments to the policy management section. I I mean, there, there is a diagram that we can add as well. I was thinking about that. Um, I might suggest that and then we can decide whether or not we wanna keep that diagram because as part of the policy management working group, we, are, um, we have just um, drafted a paper which talks about how we can enforce these controls through policies. So I want to take some of those concepts and introduce here as well in the supply chain security um, and reference architecture. And then I also added um, scope for admission controller. I know Marina and myself, we were supposed to um, provide scope statement there. Uh, Marina, please take a look and let me know if you agree with that or if there are any changes that need to be made there. I think I took a quick look, but I'll, I'll have more time hopefully this week to actually get into that. Sounds good. And then once the scope is defined, I think we can start adding that to the admission controller um, details, right? That section needs to be detailed out still. You, you were saying about missing diagrams. Uh, I'm gonna try to take a stab at some illustrations, try to substantial things so we can kind of compose things. I do feel that we're, we're blocked in some areas because we don't have a picture to talk to yet or, or the pictures are, are a little bit from, from different places. So there's that uh, speaking about keys and certificates. I actually went in last night and broke those down into two separate categories. I, I think like lumping signing keys with like workload identities has has created a lot of confusing confusion. Like I, I want to bring up for discussion if if we want to break it out in like discrete function of well, cryptographic material serves one function if it's securing inter-service communication and identifying the subjects of, of the software factory. And then there is also cryptographic material within the assembly line or conveyor belt for, for the functionaries and uh, the key material to check for the validity or whether these have been rotated at, at a later point in time. What do you all think? Or should we just have like, hey, there's there's certificates, there's tokens, there's keys, and talked about those three things together as we were initially. I do think it makes sense maybe to separate them when the distinction is between um, material that's being used as credentials in some form and material that is being used uh, in some other way, um, which I think you've kind of, you've, you've established in a way you've split this out. So I think that's, you know, for like signing or what have you. Um, so that, that I think is helpful. Okay. And I didn't elaborate a whole lot into it. I just, I just wanted to leave it there. I can share the screen and like make it more obvious apparent what I did. I can start writing more into it now that like we have the skeleton like broken out in like two separate arms, but this was like 
certificates and keys and it had like the bulleted list was a single bulleted list and then public signing keys were, were much further below buried like after like pipeline definitions Yeah, I think that was because um, those were being grouped with the outputs, um, which we haven't really mm. made a distinction here between the inputs and the outputs in this whole list um, here. But, but we were assuming that one of the things you want to get from the software factory is the public signing key so that you can verify that you know the signatures you have are legit. OK. So it should still have have the mansion and, and the outputs. I'll, I'll fix that. Like, good to call it beforehand, I think. It, will, it would also be interesting if, if we do talk about Spiffy Federation, how you could like actually just point two factories to like their public API endpoints and, and have that exchange happen automatically. And well, you wouldn't need to copy that over or store that yourself. Like have have that validation happen programmatically. I think that would be the most ideal a scenario. But where you don't have line of sight or you don't have connectivity or these are strictly offline requirement, like offline environments, you may need to to keep track of of those public signing keys and protect them commensurately. I do have a question there. We're saying that the public sign keys, and I'm assuming we're talking certificates there, um, would be an output. I would feel like that would be an input unless you're talking the certificate chain. And you know, logic being there is that if you have it as your output that's the sign key, then anybody that pulls that in as their next step is their input, just trust whatever you just gave them. Regardless of whether they should trust it. Yeah, uh, this this would be the the certificate change. Okay, and so they would still have like a root certificate or something like that. They verify that against. Right. Okay. Yeah, but you don't want to say like, "Hey, set up the system so so it print your keys to to the screen." Like much like Vault, I was you're using Vault open source, not Vault Enterprise. It it kind of goes back to like the top version one, trust on first use. It's you know trust whatever you just received the first time, which means you know especially for the ephemeral node, you just trust everything because there is no you know second use in that in that case, and so we want to be careful that we don't have set up that scenario here. Yeah. Or like with AWS keys, presumably through through OIDC Federation, if like any AWS services are are in the mix, you could do like IAM role bindings to split the IDs and such. Yeah, let's let's think hard about this one. I'll I'll take the first pass since I I started like do some surgery on it already. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Michael, um, back to you. That's that's the round of updates. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So one thing I uh, actually that's that's I think um, a little related. Something that I think we need to to think about how. Um, uh, one thing I think that's in scope that I don't think we've really talked about that much, um, and it's something that I've been poking around with a, a bit lately, is admission control for the software factory itself. Right to enforce that only signed images are being run inside the software factory, um, and those sorts of things, like almost like a you know, we don't need to go too deep into the details on you know where you're rooting your trust per se, um, but we do need to essentially say, hey, look, if you're running builds, you need to make sure that those builds themselves, like the the containers that are running those builds, are signed, um, because otherwise you end up in a you know. A, a pretty bad situation. And like, in fact, actually one of the things I'm going to be demoing at KubeCon is like showing, hey, without that sort of thing, I can get Tecton and Toto, et cetera. I can get it to sign whatever I want. Um, 
And so just need to make sure, like, I think we need to, to sort of see, uh, we need to make sure that, that sort of is, is highlighted that, you know, you need to make sure that the, whatever you're running inside of the software factory um, itself is, is signed and has gone through some sort of validation process. Otherwise it's not, you know. Yeah, so uh, Michael, I think in the pipeline definition section, I added this, uh, that all the pipelines uh, should be basically whatever you are executing, they should be signed. That includes the definition themselves and whatever images that you are using to execute, those those should be signed. So we can basically say, or whatever pipeline you are executing, maybe tech or architect actions, say anything, uh, you can trust that execution. Right? Cool. Yeah. Then I think we just need to hook it back into the admission control work, just so that it it becomes clear that we're also saying, hey, you know, there's the admission controller for what's going to be the artifacts that we're running in production, okay. and then there's also yeah. Like largely, I think they're almost identical because um, I think to some extent, you know, the the software factory, we're almost saying like, hey, you know, you need some level of software factory for the software factory. Um, but just, you know, we just need to make sure that we're, we're explicit about it. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Matt, do you support that? I'm curious how you think about like gates and controls, like pre-admission control in a pipeline. You're talking about to me? Yeah. Uh, so you're talking about admitting what? I mean, there's the actual execution steps, which I completely agree need to be signed and whatnot. What, what other things are you talking about? What other things are we overlooking potentially. Could we be doing more in the pipeline up front? I I have not picked through the doc in complete detail, so I don't know exactly what uh, gaps okay. there are yet. Yeah. Um, so I had a comment in here about um, uh, getting comment access. Should I just request access or is there a group I should join? rather than pestering someone with my. <laughs> OK. That's likely going to go to Brandon Lum or Michael. Yeah, I can sure. add you. By the way, can I give a quick update? Um, yeah, man. Go for it. Yeah, so not related to the white paper, but related to the group. So uh, NIS um, is working on the secure software development framework. Um, they approach us, um, the chairs, to kind of take a posture, make sure that uh, we don't have any conflicts with what they're doing uh, with the white papers and things like that. So. It's not up for public comment yet. So just a quick update, the chairs will be going through just making sure that everything's coherent. Um, you know, it's not, I think we just want to make sure that we don't contradict each other. Uh, and, you know, once the draft is ready, it should be available for public comment. Would it be easier if, if we give them a look into what they're we're working on and like they, they check yeah. themselves that there isn't anything contentious? Yeah, so so they already they kind of sent us something, so we are doing the work <laughs> instead of them. Um so yeah, uh, based on what we've written, what we've written for the white paper, you know, Emily, myself, and right now we'll we'll do some uh we'll do some work there. I know. We're, okay. we're doing we're doing the daily work yeah so <laughs> yeah 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 they're 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 not taking it on them that's kind of annoying but okay keep us posted yep hey matt feel free to go for editor access uh like one thing we've tried try to do is like keep comments to a minimum like the document is fairly drafty no one is super attached to anything that's been written. 
So if you find something that it'll be easier to edit than like try to write up a comment and like get people to rewrite it, just go for it. If you feel you can express it better or like it lacks clarity, anything like details could be added. Sure, I'll, I'll try and go through this later today. Thanks. Sweet, thank you. Appreciate you jumping in. Do we want to do the, the group review of pre-built, built, and post-built, Michael? Or what do you want to direct folks sure. to next? Yeah, no. Um, uh, that sounds good to me. Axel, let's try your audio again. Yeah, is this any better? Not really. <laughs> I can see your faces, okay. Uh, anything you want to direct the the attention of people to, to start off, or like you just want want everyone to read it and so, so sorry, I I, I missed that. Uh, uh. So nothing specific to review. He he just wants like maybe Prius comment or an optional part on it. Let's Um, is there still a Priya comment? There was at one point. It's resolved. I see one where she says, not sure if we want to include this. Otherwise, I'm not sure what else to say on this section around build artifacts. I'm not sure if that's the comment you're looking for. Yeah, that's the one. Michael, this reads as it might have been written by you. Yeah, so I mean, uh, the original piece might have been written by me, but then sort of reworded. So I'm trying to um, make sure I'm understanding the, the context here. Um, Yeah, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what's meant by, yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't write that piece. But with that said, I think that there's probably valid stuff in there um, regarding, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think that, that area, like having it there makes a whole lot of sense, like that specific comment. I do think that um, at some level we want to include metadata regarding like, hey, this, um, we assume, 
you know, th this build we're signing that this build is, um, well, you know, was built hermetically or something like that. I think that that's valuable, but I don't think that's the right place to put it. I think this is the general place just to kind of say, Hey, what, what, what is included here? Scratch yeah. it for the time being. Yeah. In the distribution group, we, one of the questions we were asking is what, what is the, what are the artifacts? And we are coming up with container images, any metadata on that arbitrary blobs, potentially binaries, you know, if you're operating things like charge or something like that, the build logs, signatures, S bombs, attestation certificates, maybe even like Helm chart stuff like that. So do we want to capture some of that in here? Yeah, I think the, uh, that's important, right? Because build artifact is not only image as Michael was saying, uh, saying it, it includes others as well. I think it, we have input output sections, right? We can capture all those uh, potential output in that section there. Yeah, we are considering each one right. of those as an output from right. whatever we're building. A given S bomb should be one of the output, right? That uh, we're generating mm -hmm. as a part of the process. Maybe this is just a nit, but uh, it, this seems to say that artifacts are built by the build environment only after testing. That seems a little odd. Uh, aren't sometimes you testing the build artifacts? If you're not, <laughs> where do these artifacts come from that you're testing? Chicken and the egg situation. Right, right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it just seems odd. I mean, it, I, I agree that sometimes artifacts are built after testing, but that bald statement just seems false on its face. Fair, yes. Yeah. Uh, Brandon and Shripat, you you want to take this one on? Flesh it out? Yeah. 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 Okay. I'll throw an edit on that today. Sweet. I I think that there is um, depending on how you've you set it up, I think that there's definitely a way to word it so that it comes off like the final signed artifact should only be done after all the testing and everything else. But yeah, I, I agree that right now, yeah, it, it, it reads a little weird. I'm not sure anybody does it, but you can even make a case. I'm not gonna test it until you sign it. To, so I verified that uh, what I'm testing is what you wanted. So I, I, I just the, the, the A before B is probably too strong here. How's that as it's written? <laughs> <laughs> also, I don't, I don't. Oh, go ahead. I, was gonna say, I may or may not just completely rewrite the whole paragraph on you. That's a solution. <laughs> also, um, something that I think like uh, and. I don't think is necessarily super clear just to kind of go back to some of the other stuff we were talking about before, but it's something that we need to sort of consider to when thinking about sort of like that bottom turtle problem and, and, and so on is sort of, you know, the, the, the thoughts on, you know, where, uh, where to root trust. I think a lot of the rooting of trust should be left up to the um, implementer where, where they feel comfortable with it. With that said, I think we need to be sort of clear about some of it so that folks recognize, I think when it comes to some of the stuff, like people are going to have the questions around like, Hey, when building out a secure software factory, how am I sure that I'm building it securely? Um, you know, and so there, there is a little bit of a, a um, uh, there is a bit of a like you know a bottom turtle problem there, and I think we just need to make it clear like you know what what we're saying you know what we recommend versus what we sort of say is 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 more uh, on you know the end user of this thing. And since I haven't done my full pass end to end through this. Do we have a section in here that's defines like reproducible and hermetic builds, that sort of stuff? 
Yeah, I think down we have the build process, uh, these steps, we have some discussion around the hermetic field. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to delete the details on reproducible and hermetic from the artifacts section before making yeah. sure it's somewhere else. So thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So I general, think we... I'm sorry, you should be defining your terms before using them. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I was just about to say, I think we we have talked a little bit about it in the individual areas but i don't think we have put out actual definitions of this is a hermetic build this is a reproducible build or even citations to definitions much less a glossary yeah uh but just as a reminder i think we uh and correct me if i'm wrong but i i think we sort of more or less agreed that if possible, we should um, refer to other definitions than to sort of redefine um, any of the terms. So if there is sort mm -hmm. of a, a, you know, existing CNCF docs or, or a similar around, you know, this is what a reproducible build is, this is what a hermetic build is, we should just sort of have a footnote and cite it. Does it have to be CNCF? Because I mean, the reproducible builds folks have definitions for that. Oh, well, uh, the salsa folks have uh, a definition for hermetic. Yeah, sorry. Uh, that, that, uh, yeah, uh, anything in the in in the community. <laughs> <laughs> Th thanks. <laughs> you have me worried. Anything on the internet. Oh well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is a little scary. I, I know. Yeah, you I'd be that. redefining everything. <laughs> Hermetic means you can summon demons, right? That's that's what it means. <laughs> you can transmogrify software. It's not a build anymore. It's now chemical reaction. That's right. Alchemy. Michael, I hear what you were saying before around modeling trust boundaries, but I'm curious if, like there's several ways to think about that. And we can say like, hey, like, yeah, try to try to keep like the PKI for this standalone or like you may onboard it onto a wider PKI deployment. My mind also goes to think like, well, like, People like to think of FPGAs as hardware root of trusts. Yeah, I think I think that there's like two parts. One is like, you know, or actually there's, there's multiple parts, but it's not just necessarily the keys per se, but it's also stuff like, as an example, right? Um, when building, let's say, I, let's say I'm building a Go app, right? I want to make sure that whatever I'm like my compiler or my image that contains my compiler itself is signed and that I can trust it in some way, because otherwise if I'm building a container, right. And, and it turns out I'm not using a signed image and somebody has come in and, you know, swap that out with a, a bad builder. Right. And I don't have some mechanism to, to validate where that builder came from and I'm just picking it up. Uh, my, my secure software factory is just picking it up. I'm going to end up in a situation where, oh, I'm, you know, building compromised stuff and everything gets signed because as far as it knows, it's, you know, it's fine because we're not validating where that, you know, where those things came from. Well, and, and, and those guarantees are different if, if that compiler is using a shared credential to identify itself versus that compiler got fingerprinted and read in a scan the moment it got bootstrapped. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think just making it like, e even if we, we don't necessarily have an opinion on exactly how deep you go there, right? Like, you know, I, I don't think we're going to suggest that, you know, on, on day zero that, you know, you're, you're bootstrapping your Linux from scratch, right? Um, you know, with a, with a minimal comp compiler that you've written by hand. I don't think we're, we're, we're necessarily saying that, but we might want to sort of say, hey, look, these are things that you still need to consider and, and whatever the um, the end user of this thing needs to think about what they're comfortable with as being that where they're rooting that trust. Mm -hmm. All right, so, so but, uh, for definitions, for the moment, I'm, I'm just gonna slip in some text 
suggested text in the supply, software supply chain section with uh, references to definitions for hermetic and reproducible. Feel free to move around or whatever. But <laughs> awesome. Well, I, I, I think what they mean by the, uh, for, for Matt on the hermetic is uh, generally before, you know, you, 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 you generally can't do any builds that are hermetic without first getting the data. And sure. So, so, and so I, I, you get the data from a source uh, and making sure that you know that it's what exactly it is. And then you do the rest of it within a network jail. So uh, to give a little background for why I started to re reason about this distinction was, you know, I'm going to I'm going to use the dirty basil word. Um, but so, you know, in the Google days, right, um, the mono repo was hermetic, right? Like you had the full source laid out and there was no network access. There was was no fetching external dependencies. Everything was in tree. Right. And so proper network jail. Basil introduced this idea of workspace where they wanted you to like have these immutable external references. And it, once that was realized, right, the build could execute hermetically, but, um, and, you know, for reproducibility and whatnot, use these immutable references. And the reason I make the distinction is if that thing is referenced immutable, immutably and the service goes down, you can't, or it's, you know, taken down. Uh, you can't necessarily reproduce the build anymore, right? Because you, you don't necessarily have all the assets in tree. And so, uh, you know, it, it is sort of hermetic in the sense that if the network is available, you will only get the environment you expect because, you know, you're referencing it by hashes and verifying checksums and whatnot. So if the if the network fetch were to complete, you know, it's the equivalent and, of a hermetic it wasn't build. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. It, right. I, I think so, the challenge is that for a lot of folks, there, you know, hey, you must have a copy of the internet available is not a reasonable condition if you're not Google. Uh, if you're <laughs> Google, that's a perfectly reasonable condition. I got it. Uh, yeah, so, but if other folks want to be able to do it, we we and saying you must first make a copy of everything of all time, that may be a little rough to ask for. <laughs> Well, I mean, just what you've blessed, right? I mean, uh, you don't necessarily want to allow your developers to have access to uh, every every you know package that's available on the internet, right? So, um, but uh, ah, right, I I I get that it's very <laughs> nitpicky, but like looking at that definition, right? Like that that feels like a very basal definition, not a very blaze definition. If um, you know, I I get that it's nuanced and very nitpicky, but. Um, well, no, it's not nitpicking the sense of what happens when the network goes down. I think that's that's where the nitpick all of a sudden becomes, uh, oh, this is not so nitpicky. Um, and <laughs> nitpicking and security. Um, yeah, but yeah, but, I, but I think that it's a fair issue, and and I I, I think a lot of you already were. I, I look very much at you know, hey, risks, trade offs. I'd rather have the full copies. If I can't get the full, if I can't afford to get the full copies, I'd rather at least have a, a an immutable reference. So you know, and you know, what what can I back off to given money available, uh, money resources available? Uh, but I I think that's not a not not a nitpick in the sense that it's important when the network goes down. <laughs> I don't know how you do like to do citations. All right. All right. So I'm going to try to I'm going to copy in the salsa definite, uh, 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 um, and then maybe we need to note the whole network goes down. Pseudo hermetic. I don't know how to distinguish that, but I, I think you raise a great point, and I think I, I think both are valid viewpoints. Um, 
it's stronger if you can handle network down, if you can afford the space for all that. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go poke Kim and see if I can get <laughs> that to change. Along those lines, do we want to write anything about, like, because when, when it comes to some of this hermetic um, stuff, a, a lot of it really comes down to sort of, yeah, figuring out your dependency tree and actually enforcing that, you know, you're pulling in only what you expected. Um, and I, it sounds like there, there might be, you know, several levels of being able to sort of accomplish this, whether it's hermetic versus pseudo hermetic. Um, and so on. And I know that there's, you know, uh, I, I know I name drop Nix a lot, but I know that they, they have an interesting mechanism um, for, uh, you know, doing some of these sorts of things by literally building everything starting from largely scratch and then um, enforcing that, you know, they have essentially just a, a um, build definitions all the way down the chain. Yeah, that that sounds like bootstrappable builds, which are, some folks are working on, but that's uh, I, I, I'm not so sure a lot of people are willing to take that step today. I'd love to see that long term, oh, but I don't think that's sure. And and I think the way that Nick sort of handles a lot of that is saying, "Hey, we, we're we're giving you the definitions of all the builds, so if you wanted to, you could rebuild everything from scratch." But we also provide a cache that's you know cryptographically signed and and. Um, most of the packages in it are, are reproducible in some fashion um, in order to, to sort of say, hey, like you don't necessarily need to be um, hermetic across the board because we can kind of guarantee that, uh, you know, this is the output. All right, I, I tried to slip in some definitions near the beginning because I think those are important <laughs> if we're gonna talk about them. And it also connects this doc with other docs that people are working, which I think would be a, a good thing. I, I'm trying to work between groups that don't talk to each other very often, and I'm hoping to try to work to fix that. <laughs> the goal is just to have one call with 60 people on it every week. So general assembly. There we go. So uh, does this, so at least I've slipped in some definitions. Hopefully that helps with links. Feel I don't know what your reference. Yeah, it doesn't look like you have a particular format for references. So I slipped in hyperlinks and hopefully that helps. Okay, we, we've all been generally thinking about KubeCon as, as the general date to have a public draft. Uh, we're probably gonna have to pick up quite a bit in order to do that. How are you all feeling? Is, is that realistic? We don't have to do it. Like, 
we can we can agree on something else. At the same time, I do think it's doable. Yeah. Public draft, not a final copy. Is that what we're saying? Right. Yeah. Yep. And how much are we expecting to be in that? Like, there's there's certain sections like the uh, the appendices that are just stubs right now. Are we expecting to fill those out, or are we just thinking about like the top half of this as being the public draft? That's a good question. If like we we should probably draw a line, and what's not making the line, cut it out. Do you, do you want to see to uh, like wait till sort of next week see if anything's sort of populated the appendix and if not we just say hey <laughs> gonna cut it mm -hmm. yeah I cool. think the part of the motivation of like having something in coupon is to like get more folks aware of the work as well and just get um some others to help out with the implementation as well yeah so we draw the line. <laughs> We're, we're still going to talk about it at KubeCon one way or the other, right? So, yeah. Just making sure we're not doing all sorts a disservice to try to get something out within a period of time, but that something out is, is not meaningfully, it is not any more meaningful than other dogs that are out there today. Like let's throw a value line, right? Like what's what's the value we want to create from this? David, do you know of, of other efforts kind of like lined up like right around the same dates, like mid-October? For publications. Um, let's see here. Um the uh, the the open SSF is, uh, is planning to uh, announce its reorg, which I mean, it's, reorg is probably not really fair. It's it's been long planned, um, but that's not really a document per se. It's much more of a they because it was started during a pandemic. They decided to not have uh, funding for members, um, but they always intended to switch to that. And when they do, they'll have a lot more funding. Hey, that's great. I'm I'm glad that they're going to have more funding and be able to do a lot more things. It's not really a document. <laughs> um, I mean, it's you know, we'll be in that space. Well, you know, it's more than press. I mean, it's it's a it's a good thing. It's it's yeah, sure. it's expectation that more good things will happen in the future. So, but it's not a document, which is I think what you're asking about. Um, uh, the salsa folks are trying to work on kind of complete, but I don't know. I'm not sure that they have a particular date in mind yet. Um, no, I don't think we do. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I'm part of the group that's trying to work on that. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and you are too. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, so I think on that note, like on that end, I know that for the doc, we were trying to see. Since, you know, SALSA seems like a pretty reasonable framework to at least um, cite in there as well of saying, hey, you know, what, one of the things I think we, we would love to be able to do, right, with the architecture, maybe not for the first draft, but um, is to be able to say, assuming your artifacts, assuming your system goes through the, this secure software factory, we would expect you to be SALSA level two, right, based on this version of SALSA. Something like that. Yeah, cur currently we, we lack metrics, right? And we talk about one point of like capturing the differential between like doing things some way versus the way we're proposing, like you're mitigating the supply chain attack by this much probability. But it, we could we could go with like the salsa levels. Well, I, I think regardless, yeah, we do need to have something there around, you know, what what should what should the outcome be? Like assuming you follow this, like what you should have a reasonable expectation that you're mitigating these things in these ways. 
right? And then these are maybe the things that are sort of out of scope that you still need to be concerned about, like, you know, just high level things. Because I, I think it, you know, would be useful, right? Because, you know, I think people are going to want to understand, you know, what does this protect? Does this protect me against a solar winds attack and against what sort of, um, what sort of sophistication of actor, right? Like, you know, what, what is this actually doing for me? Yeah. Well, this, this OWASP list, like all the things that are like broken off related, like should not be exploitable here, for example. Pick yep. your OWASP and list. I, yeah. I mean, I, I think, you know, as, as um, an end user, I know one of the things that is really important for us, right? Like we're not selling software per se outside of, you know, online banking and that kind of thing. But, you know, um, we're, we're not, you know, and for us, a lot of it's like, we just want people to tell us like, hey, does this protect me from, you know, becoming, you know, a solar winds? Like, does this protect my, uh, like, protect my internal software from, you know, getting compromised? Like, or, and how? Like, they, they want to understand those sorts of things. Obviously, adopting something like a framework where we can just sort of point to, hey, this is the framework. The framework describes how all that's done that that's good. If not, then we just need to be very explicit about, you know, the sorts of attacks this mitigates. Well, like this set of things yield a better posture because of X and Y. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 you know, just sort of, I think it's, it's really is like sort of like the outcome space, like this prevents this sort of attack. Um, in which ways, like, I guess, like what sort of sophisticated, you know, threat actor or whatever, or what it does, what doesn't do, you know, I, I, I know I'm repeating myself here. Um, so, I, it, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's actually though quite normal. Give a list of attacks. Here's, Matt, go here's ahead. what this mitigates. I'm sorry. Did I interrupt? My apologies if I did. Yeah. yeah so I, I was just gonna say, like, I think, it, I think it makes a lot of sense to present the complete architecture, right. But like, it, it will be complicated to, you know, check all the boxes and, you know, hitting salsa level four is much more complicated than hitting a lower level, right? So understanding, you know, what protections you give up by dropping pieces of the architecture and, you know, making informed choices about the, the attacks you potentially open yourself up to and whatnot. Um, and, you know, it, I don't know, I, I, I like that, um, I like associating it with something like, you know, this is needed needed for salsa level four because you can sort of go over and salsa has, you know, the picture with all of the components of the supply chain and, you know, attacks that have gone after each piece of those different things, right? So, um, you know, you can potentially, you know, use that to sort of figure out what, um, what protections you'd lose uh, if you were to decide not to do A or B or C. Um, and, you know, you could also potentially cross-reference with, you know, these types of things tend to um, line up as being requirements for, you know, compliance certification, A, B, C, D, whatever, right? Pick your favorite, you know, uh, compliance that imposes things on the, the process, right? FedRAMP, PCI DSS you know, socks, whatever. Right. Possibly even automate some of those audits. Just remove the pen and paper. Yeah. Yeah, like, well, the, the other thing is like, look at the T-Mobile attack, right? Like you can be salsa level four, but if you're like top of rack switch, hasn't been patched in a, in a long while, and that's the entry point and someone performs lateral moves from there, like, but let's let's don't forget to like secure all the peripheral things to the software factory, like the door to the software factory, to reduce like the likelihood of of these things happening. Right. Like, yeah. The, the other one yeah. I've been thinking about is even if you do something like a reproducible build and you verify the whole thing is identical on both sides, a lot of times we still fan that into a single signing step then signs that artifact and releases to the public. And so thinking through the process in my head, does it make sense to, you know, have this fully two pads all the way to the end customer, whoever that end customer is, you know, might be an internal customer and have that do a verification of both builds actually went through. There's, um, 
there, there's a tool that uh, does that for for Nix builds called Trustix. I think that they do some pretty cool stuff where actually they use um, uh, Trillion, whatever the the Google sort of Merkle tree thing. Um, it's it's pretty neat. I, I think that that's something to take a look, uh, conceptually take a look at. Yeah. We don't talk a whole lot about transparency logs in this reference architecture yet, do we? Uh, no, but I, I do think, well, I think we kind of just say metadata store in here because we're trying to, I, I don't know if, uh, yeah, yeah, we don't really yeah. talk about it outside of just saying, hey, it's it, signed metadata and so on should be live in some sort of. Right. Yeah, I, I think complementary to that, we can talk about trillion and different dimensions. Like when we talk about certs, talk about certificate transparency. Cool. Anything uh, else? I know we're already a few minutes over. Securing the supply chain is a, is a full-time yeah. job, man. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, one thing actually quickly, I wanted to just sort of add, and I've been sort of mucking about this for just my own personal stuff, but I'm starting to build a set of um, like test cases for like, hey, this is what a compromised supply chain looks like. Will the system sort of detect it? You know, will, will whatever we're building detect it? Um, and uh, it's still quite early right now. All it does is it, it just handles the, the bad builder use case um, and shows the need for uh, like signed builders and, and enforcing that you're, you're trusting your builder. Um, but yeah, uh, I think that's, uh, at some point, I think we need to start thinking about like maybe as a next step, um, test cases for this sort of thing to sort of show like, hey, you know, here's a reference implementation of this thing. We can run these compromised builders and show it catches it. Or we can show, you know, like, hey, here's, here's what happens when it, you know, it, it tries to ingest unsigned code, something like that. Oh, it fails, you know, that, that kind of thing. Anyway, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, everyone. It was nice meeting everyone. Uh, sorry for the hot mic at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> See ya. See ya.